This is part three of the combined async series. This time we look at async stream. Our journey began with our standard SwiftUI setup where the controller or view model communicated changes using observable object at published and the combined mechanism. In part one, we moved at published and combined to live within the view model and used an async sequence to communicate changes to our SwiftUI view. In part two, we replaced combine and at published with the use of the notification center. This time, we're going to remove the notification center and use an ordinary property inside the view model and communicate the changes using an async sequence, in fact, a concrete case called an async stream. Let's begin with where we left off last time. In my view model, when the user tapped the next button, we called this next method and posted a notification with our notification name that contained a random number between 1 and 50 that we stored in the user info dictionary. On the receiving end, we listened for notifications with that same name, extracted the user info dictionary if it existed, and reached inside that user info dictionary to find our random number and verify that it was an int. Numbers is then an async sequence of ints that we listen for in main view. It seems a bit silly that we went to all that trouble of taking our random number and bundling it up inside a user info dictionary inside of a notification and then posted it to the notification center and then received that notification and went to all the trouble of reaching inside to get that random number. We'll begin by splitting numbers into two pieces. In the top part, we create the notification and in the second, we transform it and extract the random number. So rename the top part notifications. In fact, no one needs to know about it. Let's make it private. The bottom part will use those notifications. And so numbers is our notifications extract the user info dictionary and then reach inside to get the value for number key. This is a simple refactoring and everything runs as before. But we're going to change the numbers part and we're going to make things much worse before we make them better. I want to introduce the idea of an async stream. You've worked with sequences for a long time in Swift. It's a very useful protocol. A sequence is a sequence of some type of element, and a sequence must have an associated iterator. And an iterator must have a next method that returns an optional element. This is how a for loop works. For in returns the next element until that next element is nil. Now, you just can't create a sequence. We create some concrete thing that conforms to sequence, for instance, an array. And you just can't create an array. Remember, every sequence has an element. We must create an array of something, for instance, an array of ints. You may not think of it that way because we tend to use this syntactic sugar to represent an array of ints. So in our non-async world, we have an array of ints that conforms to sequence and so we can get the next element. What happens in the asynchronous world? In this case, we have a protocol called async sequence. It too requires an element. I've got to have an async sequence of some things. Instead of an iterator, we have an async iterator because we don't know when the next element will be available. And so in this case, we also have a next method, but the next method is async. Similar to the non-async case, we can't just create an async sequence. We have to create a concrete instance of an async sequence. Notifications was one example. A very useful example, sort of our equivalent of an array, is an async stream. You have to have an async stream of something. And in this case, we're going to have an async stream of ints. So just like an array, we're going to create an async stream. And now and then we add things to it and watch them float down the stream. How does this happen? When we create an async stream, we're given back a mechanism and we use that mechanism, which is called a continuation, to add things to the stream by saying continuation.yield and provide the value that we're placing into the stream. Let's see how this works in code. Numbers is going to be an async stream. Remember, you have to say an async stream of what, so we'll specify it is an async stream of ints. The final argument is a closure, which we'll bring out as a trailing closure, and it will provide us with a continuation. Remember, that continuation is our mechanism for adding things to the async stream. 
For now, we're going to use our notification center to get the elements that we'll add to the stream. And so we will for await notification in our async sequence notifications. Because we use await, we have to put this inside of a task so that it's inside of some asynchronous context. And then as we get each notification, we'll process them as before. First, if letting to get our user info dictionary and then checking to see if that user info dictionary has the counter key, and if it does, that that value is an int. So at this point, we have our number, we have our continuation, and we have our async stream. In fact, our number is poised to enter the stream, and we do so by telling the continuation to yield the number, and our number goes down the water slide into the stream. Run the app. It runs as before, and everything works. It still feels like too much, like we can do without this notification center. In fact, if you look at this code, this is all the code that has to do with the notification center. It would be nice if we could simplify all of this and remove the notification center. So let's rethink this. So let's start with numbers. It's still an async stream of ints. And when I create it, I get that mechanism, that continuation for adding the ints to the stream. The problem is that I'm going to be creating the ints that should enter the stream down in the next method so that every time I tap next, I create a new number. So the problem is how do I get those numbers into the stream? Because the continuation is in a separate method way up here. The solution is actually pretty straightforward. We create a property that will hold the continuation and the only thing we do inside of numbers is set our property to the continuation that's provided when we create our async stream. And now in the next method, we can use this continuation, if it exists, of course, and yield will place our random integers into the async stream. Run the app. It runs as before, and now I've got simple communication between our support and our main view. No combine, no notification center, just this simple code. And Swift 5.9 includes an enhancement that will make this even nicer. I'll show you how in part four of this series after WWDC, where we'll also look at using observation, which is this Swift Evolution Proposal 395 that I've been mentioning, but that'll have to wait till after WWDC 23.